When every second counts, casualty behavior often drives triage decisions. Automated systems and AI can accelerate the gathering of that information, giving medics more time to save lives. Different sensors capture different truths. Visual data shows injuries. Heartbeat, respiration, and body temperature can be sensed with infrared, acoustic, or other sensing instruments. Together, they enable rapid, contact-free assessments. In the first minutes of triage, how a casualty behaves often tells you more information about their condition than obtaining perfect vital signs. Sensors and AI can surface those clues fast, while vital signs can later confirm and quantify the accuracy of the assessment. Once we find a casualty, what we try to do is um, we ask a couple of questions like where they are hurt, what they are going through, and um, based on their response, um, we take that as an input and then also we record their vitals like, you know, breathing rate and um, all the other things. The environment that you deploy the model in really affects its behavior. Right? So you have to have, be able to have a model that can make a determination on which camera do I want to use. The two major sensory data that we find are very important is a visual stream that encompasses the generic RGB but can also be supported by thermal and other wa wavelengths that we can capture. And there's another very important uh, sensory data that is audio. These two sensory streams are the most important. Vital signs like pulse, and blood pressure, even breathing are all subtle signals that are often measured up close or even with devices that touch the patients. So we're having to develop a whole new set of methodologies for vital sign measurement using standoff sensors that allows the robot to be contactless. So for our UGBs, our main sensors are color and thermal cameras. We also have a 3D depth camera and we use millimeter wave radar. So that's really the only sensor that can do non-contact, uh, reliable heart rate and respiratory rate sensing. We have a visual sensor and a thermal sensor, which gets us pretty far, but we found that we still need additional sensors to be able to get the level of assessments that we're looking for. So we designed our own custom sensor, one of which is a millimeter wave radar that allows us to get really interesting information about vitals. So heart rate, respiration rate, we can see the movement of the chest, micro movements of the, of the heart even, and we can extract detailed information about vitals from that custom sensor. It's not very easy to get the best of the sensors because these sensors, they're very expensive. We're using the most budget sensors that are available. We're using other mobile phone cameras right now for getting the RGB stream. We're using very simple microphones to get the input. Our sensors, they might not be the state of the art, but I think that's something that is easily available and that shows that an algorithm is much more stronger than a sensor that you put in. Real world sensing is messy. Smoke, dust, noise, poor lighting, and the system's own movements can confuse any model. The major obstacle for teams in the system's challenge is integrating reliable sensing and navigation through treacherous environments where every failure has real consequences. This is an amazing environment to test in. We cannot simulate anything near the fidelity, quality, depth, or kind of extreme environments that can be done here. For AI to be a trustworthy partner in crisis, it must be safe, secure, and reliable. Qualities that DARPA has emphasized in AI research for decades. What starts as a challenge today could become tomorrow's standard of care.